Kira Slicer released version 4.10, and the biggest comment I got from viewers at Midwest Rep Rap Festival is they wanted me to keep releasing my profiles because they work better than the standard profiles in Kira. So I'm going to release new profiles and show you some of the features of 4.10 right here on Film of Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you every week by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. Ultimaker did release a new version of Cura Slicer, version 4.10. Now, it looks like mostly bug fixes to me, but one of the new features is a flow tool. You can go to preview and then the flow tool, and in colors, it'll show you the various flows at different points of the print. Now, one of the differences in my profiles is flow, and I can't seem to see it on this tool. So I'm not sure how useful this tool is yet. I need to play with it. But let's look at my new profiles. My profiles are available to download from my ChepClub.com site. Now, a lot of this site is private for my Patreon supporters, but the profiles are available for free to download, and I do have the latest version. So let's look at the difference between mine and the Cura Standard profiles. One of the biggest differences between my profiles and the Cura Standard profiles are the acceleration and jerk settings. I actually set them in my profile. And that's because many of these under three clones don't have them properly set. In fact, some of the firmware doesn't have it properly set. So if you use the standard quality, you can see they don't enable it. So you rely on those wrong settings. You get shifting, you get weird corners. So that's why I set it in my profiles to get better prints. Another difference between our profiles are the flow settings. If you look at the standard quality in Cura, they're 100% across the board. Now, if we go back and look at my profile, at least the 2.0, I have 95% for the outer wall flow and 95% for the initial layer flow. They say, why would I do that? Well, that's from testing. I use this extrusion multiplier calibration cube from user Hiroshib on Thingiverse, and it works really well for what I do because the walls are exactly 0.8 millimeters thick. So I can print this and then measure and check the accuracy. So let's bring one of these into Cura 4.10. And I'm going to slice it at the standard quality and then look at the preview. And now let's try out that new tool, that flow tool. So I'll click on that, go to the drop down, select flow, and I have a color representation of the flow. Now if I scroll down through this, you can see it's a low flow on the walls, but as you get down to the bottom, it's high flow towards the top surface. So I'm not sure what that really means yet, because you'll see in a minute it's not much different than mine. So let's slice it again with mine. And it's the same colors other than the top surface. So I'm not sure what's going on there. But the difference really comes in when you actually print it. So I'm going to take those two. Let's go back to standard quality, sliced, and then print it. And here's what I get. The walls are almost consistently 0.85, too thick. So then if I slice it with mine where I have the 95% settings, then I get an accurate reading, 0.8 on all four walls. The way I calculated 95% was through testing and this basic formula. I don't know if this is official anywhere, but it's just the ratio of the actual versus the measured. And when I did that, I came out to 94%. After a lot of testing, I found 95% worked across a lot of machines, but I only put it on the outer wall. That seemed to be more consistent. Now, if you're new to all this, all you need to do is go to chepclub.com to download my profiles. You click on Cura Profiles, scroll down to the 4.10 and click on download file. It's a .zip file, so you have to unzip it, and you'll see three files, 0 .12, 0 .20, and 0 .28. Now we have to load each of these individually into Cura. So the first thing, make sure you've selected an Ender 3 machine profile. You can go to Manage Printers, select an Ender 3 or load it if you don't have one. And then once you select Ender 3, close that, and then go over here to the profiles. All the way to the bottom, you see Manage Profiles and that'll bring up the different profiles that are available. Click on Import, then go find those files that you unzipped, and one by one, open them up. It'll tell you that it loaded, and then get the next one, and then import and get the final one. And once you've got all three imported, they should be available to you as part of the drop-down. So there you have the 0.12, the 0.20, and the 0.28. All CHEP 4.10. So you go to the drop down here, and there they are 0 0.12, 0 0.20, and 0 0.28.
So now I have access to my latest Cure profiles, and they work with even the clones, like the Aquila, Neptune 2, or any of these Ender 3 clones. I even use them with any of the Creality machines, Ender 3 Max, the CR-10s. It'll work with any of those. Just load the profiles into an Ender 3, and from there, it should work within Cure. So try them out, and let me know how they work for you in the comments below. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up, and if nothing else, click on that Chep logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time, right here. The Film of Friday.